All right, so in my last video, we set up Gen2 Linux with systemd as the init system. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up GNOME, the desktop environment within Gen2. We're going to install GNOME as well as Xorg, and we're also going to attempt to run it with the Wayland uh, display server. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are on my desktop. This is Arch Linux, my primary machine. We are going to spin up that virtual machine that we had built last time. Now, for those of you that did not see this video, we set up Gen2 Linux with systemd as the init system. Uh, we also went ahead and set up We also got the system set up with a couple of basic core utilities, but nothing much really. There is no GUI, there is nothing here. We do have HTOP, so we can take a look at the system. You can see we have four CPU cores, eight gigs of RAM. All right, let's get started. First thing we want to do is do an eSelect profile list and verify that we are at the proper profile and as you can see we are set to desktop gnome system d right here and that is exactly where we want to be now that that is verified we're going to emerge x11 base slash xorg dash server We're also going to emerge gnome dash base slash gnome. Now this will take a little bit. There are a lot of packages involved with both xorg and gnome. And as you can see, we do have a couple of circular dependencies here so we might have to change our make.conf so let's go ahead and nano into slash etsy slash portage slash make.conf and let's go ahead and take a look at our use flags All right, I'm going to add in udev as well as xorg as well as pulse audio. All right, let's see if that gets us where we need to be. Alright, so what we're going to do is take a look and you can see right here that we need to have the no pulse audio use flag, so we're going to change things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and get rid of pulse audio in the use section. Let's add in pipe wire as our audio server and let's go ahead and add pulse audio in the no section. All right, control X, Y, and enter. And let's go ahead and run that emerge command again. <clears throat> Following use changes are necessary to proceed. It looks to me as if Pulse Audio is indeed a dependency. So we're going to have to get rid of pipe wire.
Well, perhaps we can add plus minimal to our make.conf. So we'll come down here to use. And we'll add minimal right here. Control X, Y, and enter to save. And let's see if we can emerge GNOME and XORG now. Alright, let's go ahead and add in a auto unmask dash right flag. All right, let's do a dispatch dash conf. And we're going to hit U, the use new. And now we're going to try to emerge those packages again. Now that we are using the most up-to-date uh, configs here. It would appear as if we are in luck. It looks like it is going to start building. We're going to go ahead and make this uh, full screen. and it looks like it is now installing so this is going to take a little bit of a while so we're just going to let this computer do its thing Eighty-two out of four hundred eighty-five. Well, strap yourselves in, guys, because this will take a while. I'll be back. All right, so we are back. That only took about two and a half hours or so to fully emerge Xorg and the GNOME base package. So our next step is going to do an environment update. And we also need to source the new profile at slash Etsy slash profile. <clears throat> Next we want to make sure that the plug dev group exists so we're going to get ENT group plug dev
All right, that group does exist. The next step is to substitute our username in this next command. So it will be g pass wd dash a. Uh, the user's name is heavy cream. And plug dev. Next thing we want to do is enable the GDM service. So we're going to do system CTL enable now GDM dot service. And there we go. We have officially started our GNOME login manager. So we're going to enter our password. And if everything worked, we do indeed have GNOME and running in Wayland and of course classic on Xorg. We're going to start this in Wayland. All right, now that we have GNOME, Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Let's um, get a proper screen resolution. Looks like XRander is not found as we are using Wayland. So we're going to do this the graphical way and go into settings, go down to displays and we're going to set our resolution to a proper 1920 by 1080 there we go let's go ahead and open up a terminal and just in case we uh, need to start up via a start x command in the tty we are going to echo uh, exec gnome dash session and a right pointing chevron and we're going to go into our home directory slash dot x init rc Oh, well, it would help if we spelled that command properly. There is an H in echo. There we go. So now we can also run invoke GNOME by running the start X command. So there we have it. We have officially set up a graphical user interface using the GNOME desktop environment in Gentoo. Uh, the next thing that we should do at this point is switch over to our root user. And we're going to emerge ask gnome dash extra slash gnome dash shell dash extensions you know, the color of this terminal is a little blinding let's go ahead and go into our preferences on the gnome terminal here <clears throat> Let's set that to a dark variant. That looks much better. And what we're doing here by emerging the GNOME shell extensions is we want to set up GNOME widgets. We want to be able to obtain widget functionality. So let's go ahead and emerge these packages right now. Or package, rather. This should go fairly quick. All right.
right, so E select GNOME dash shell dash extensions. list and this is a list of <clears throat> the available extensions that we have right now in the gen 2 setup but we can also go ahead and emerge a web browser backend so that way we can That way we can actually use the uh, GNOME uh, website pretty much and we can download our extensions directly there. It's gnome-extra slash chrome-gnome-shell. interesting it would appear as if this package no longer exists ah so if we go to wiki.gnome.org we can see that the chrome gnome shell and gnome browser connector uh, the chrome gnome shell package is now renamed to GNOME browser connector. So let's try that out. All right, there we go. So on the Gen 2 wiki, that package is actually mislabeled if you're following along with the GNOME uh, guide. So let's go ahead and close that. So we're going to emerge the GNOME tweak tool. Uh, this will hopefully be uh, everything we need to get our extensions up and running. Now it would seem as if we also need to have this GNOME extensions package, so we're going to install that as well. Let's go back over to our web browser, go to the GNOME shell extensions, let's refresh this page.
Now perhaps we might need to use a different web browser other than the actual GNOME web browser. So I'm installing Firefox-bin, a binary package. Um, this will take a lot less time to compile compared to the full-on non-compiled binary. So hopefully this will go fairly quick. And we're going to check and see if we have access to our GNOME extensions in Firefox. Even though we could have dragged and dropped every one of those files into their corresponding folders, I would like to be able to install my extensions the, the right way, directly from extensions.gnome.org Looks like that font is not working out for us in our uh, <clears throat> terminal here. Let's go back to monospace. Okay, let's go ahead and launch Firefox. Let's go down to GNOME extensions. Alright, so interestingly enough, the GNOME web browser does not support the installation of GNOME extensions. So make note of that. Maybe if uh, you happen to be a, a GNOME developer and you're watching my video, you might want to integrate extensions into your operating system, essentially. Let's go ahead and go over to extensions. And... Let's see if we have that system monitor extension installed now. No, that's not how this plugin is supposed to work. It would appear as if we are missing some APIs. you need to update the GNOME browser connector to the latest version of 42.0. Perhaps we just need to update our world set here. So 
So we're going to do an emerge dash dash sync. <clears throat> going to update the system. While we're doing that, oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and personalize GNOME a little bit. So we'll go into settings. Let's search for clock, date and time. Let's make that an AM PM. From what I'm seeing here, the uh, documentation on GNOME and Systemd is not very up to date. There are multiple mentionings of GNOME 3, and this is definitely GNOME 40. So, some of these things we're going to have to figure out on our own by the looks of it, as the wiki definitely could use a little bit of an update. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Uh, A uh, little system update. Let's just make sure that we are up to date at the world. In case uh, you were wondering, the command I just entered is essentially the same as going emerge, ask, quiet, update, deep, new use. Well, it would appear as if there are updates, so there is an update for the GNOME browser connector right there, dash 42.1. In fact, we have 117 updates to emerge. So I'm going to go ahead and let this recording play this time. Last time we had a large emerge like this, I went ahead and just close down the recording because it took about two and a half hours this one right here it's probably gonna take about a half an hour so yeah I'll uh I'll be back with you guys as soon as we are done with this update and hopefully we will be able to install gnome extensions but based off of the looks of this there are definitely a lot of packages which are out of date. All right, there we go. <clears throat> I will be back.
Now, as I'm sitting here uh, reading the Gen 2 wiki, I found something else that is kind of interesting. So we're just going to go ahead and add something into our make.conf. And we're not going to save it until after this emerge is done, but we might as well. So, GNOME's screen recorder uses the VP8 codec, which is developed by Google. Uh, the recorder does need this in order to record the desktop, and it can be enabled via the VPX use flag. So we're going to nano into slash Etsy slash portage slash make dot conf and we're going to add this in under our use flags here so we're just going to go VPX and then when the time comes we're just going to control X Y and exit and that'll go after this emerge is done Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. That is a very interesting thing and might be crucial for your installation. Well, while that's updating, I might as well write a quick little script here to uh, help in the updating process of Gentoo. So first thing we're going to do is cd into our documents folder. I'll run the ls command, there's nothing there. We're going to touch update. Gonna make a file and next thing we're gonna do is we are going to go into that file and we're going to start it out with the classic shebang and make a comment
Alright, <clears throat> so, now that update has finally completed, that gave me enough time to do a couple of things here. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, after that update, I went ahead and used systemctl daemon dash reexec. That command restarts every daemon running on the system. And pretty much that enabled me to reboot the computer after an update essentially without rebooting because systemd has some pretty good abilities built into it. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to emerge sudo and the uh, flatpak store. Sudo is a program which is going to enable my user to invoke root access pretty much. Um, and flat packs are contained packages that are held in a couple of repositories that we don't have to emerge. They'll be pre-compiled binaries and everything within them will just work. Sometimes I find that with certain programs such as Caden Live, it is better to even install it as a flat pack because sometimes when you emerge it, it just doesn't work out the way you'd like it to. It will, if uh, you're willing to put in the time, but a lot of the times it is just easier to get the flat pack of certain software, so we'll be installing flat packs on this virtual machine. While that's going, we're going to check out Firefox, and we are going to click on the GNOME extensions icon here. And I believe after that update, fingers crossed, it should just work. Let's go ahead and install Caffeine, that's a pretty small extension. And there we go, you see this icon in the top corner that will enable me to auto suspend the screensaver. So let's go back into our settings. Let's go to power. And let's set the screen to blank after five minutes again. And while that's going, we'll just take a look through some of these other extensions. There we go. Now we have a little cat running based off of our CPU speed. Always a good idea. So now that we have installed these programs, let's go ahead and I believe we have to run the vi sudo command. Oh, it looks like we need to be root for that. And we're just going to go ahead and scroll down. And we're looking for this line right here, uh, wheel. Let's go ahead and uncomment that. We'll delete the pound sign in front of it to do so. Control X, Y, and enter. Save that. And now we should be able to invoke sudo as the user. So we could do a let's close that. Let's close that. And then let's go ahead and go control X, Y, enter, and save and exit out of that. 
I during that update I did a couple of things so I went ahead and uh, wrote a quick down and dirty script that enables me to enables me to easily update the system um, yes I have alright there we go it looks as if my update script may actually be working Let's go ahead and see though. Always make sure. There shouldn't really be too much to update since we just did that massive update. <clears throat> and right here we're running the emerge depth clean command which is going to remove orphaned packages or dependencies we're no longer using anymore. Alright, there we go. Let's uh, go ahead and add something else here at the bottom. There we go. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there we have it, folks. We have successfully created a Gen 2 installation, which we're going to uh, actually go control, control shift plus. We're going to zoom in a little bit here just to show you that <clears throat> this is the make.conf that I have. These are the use flags that we're using in this case. We're going to go ahead and go control X, Y, and enter. We're going to exit out of that root, <clears throat> root user there. We're going to close this down. And now we're just going to uh, restart this system just to verify that it boots up and everything is working okay. So we're going to load into Gen2 Linux. We are using systemd as the init system. And we're going to log in to our user. And there you have it, folks. We have our cat extension at the top. We have caffeine as well. Um, we have full access to the extensions via Firefox, which is a binary package. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of pre-installed software that came with GNOME. We really didn't even check it out. Did it come with Emacs? No, it did not. Let's, we're going to have to fix that real quick while we're browsing the system. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see this. And we're going to do a sudo emerge dash dash search for Emacs. Our password is secret. And as you can see, there are a lot of different packages named Emacs. There's X Emacs, there is Emacs Eterm, Emacs Devel. Uh, X Emacs base text max. We have 
app e select emacs that might be the one we want there is space max there is a w get there is an open rc special version what is at the top of this list let's go ahead and go full screen and let's zoom out a little app editors emacs that's the one we want so we'll just go ahead and open up a new terminal here we're going to zoom in a couple of times wrong key and we're going to sudo emerge app editors dash app dash editor app dash editors slash emacs and there we go so while that's going we're just going to go ahead and put this guy right over here and let's take a look through our system while we're installing looks like we have your standard gnome things such as contacts weather uh, video application we have gedit the worst text editor ever made we have system monitor um, gedit really isn't bad it's just it's equivalent to Windows like Notepad. There's nothing special about it. There's no syntax highlighting like what Emacs brings to the table. Or Vim for that matter even has those features. Um, anyway, we have a disk partitioning tool here. Very helpful. We have GNOME Tweaks, Dictionary, a Document Viewer, an Archive Manager. Um, it is really a lot of software that comes installed with GNOME, but Keep in mind, that's what it's really all about. When you install a desktop environment like this, you're installing everything that, in theory, you would probably need. Um, there's even some games, such as the whole chess, four in a row, five or more. Um, there's a lot of games, actually, that come with GNOME. That's all right. Uh, this is the GNOME web browser here. It's not really my favorite web browser, but it is better than, say, Surf in my experience. Uh, I know I'm probably going to hear some otherwise from that one. We have the GNOME photo viewer. We have a music player. Let's go ahead and... <clears throat> here we are. This is our finalized but yet still very plain gnome installation and then let's go ahead and run a terminal and after that let's do a neo fetch And there you have it. As you can see, <clears throat> our finalized GNOME installation is using 729 megabytes of RAM, which compared to Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, or any other Linux distribution that I've tested that utilizes SystemD and GNOME, we are using roughly half of those resources. In fact, that's that's really good. This is the uh, less resource-intensive GNOME installation I've ever seen. And we have kept it under a thousand packages all day. This is Zach with Linux, and stay classy.